Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So we're back after the lunch, and the first talk that we have is Aman Sharma. Uh, no more tears from Project Nightmares. So thanks a lot, Aman. Uh, you can take it on. Thanks a lot, and welcome PyCon India to this talk of No More Tears of Project Nightmares with the added touch of the memes. This is the first time experimenting something like this. So bear with me, and this is my first PyCon talk. So are you a person who always want to complete the project at time, but never does? Are you a person in, uh, whose incomplete projects are haunting you in the dreams? Or are you the person who always think whether your code will survive the next print or not? Well, my friends, if you are, then this is the talk for you, because today we have all the gifts and goodies and all these needed uh, hacks and tricks that you always wanted to know to complete your project at time. I'm Aman Sharma. Currently, I'm founder, founder and CTO at Twimbit, and also I'm a lead at Mobile Web Dev, which is a mobile web community. And I'm also a member at Deep Learning AI OS Open Source Initiative and App. So three things will be of key important uh, in the, all the slides that we'll be covering. So first one is consistency, how you can be consistent across all these points, how you can be efficiently carrying out all these tasks, and of obviously how your all team is expected to deliver everything at 100% time. So this is a small talk agenda. Let's quickly go through it. We'll be covering about what are the things that are currently going wrong with normal and amateur uh, project practices. Also, what should be done in order to plan a project in a very efficient and smooth manner so that all these above problems doesn't occur and how you can set up a best environment so that uh, you have a productive workspace, your team is productive and working efficiently all the time, and how you can optimize your project to make it survive through all the future rough and tough sprints and whatever is coming along. The final delivery day, how you should plan to actually execute the final delivery of the product. And for finally, a quick recap into everything that we covered in the today's talk. Uh, I want to clarify this thing. I'm not an MBA student or I haven't done any project management. And this talk is not about project management. This talk is about you delivering the best way a project should be done. So uh, if you find these helpful, feel free to add more suggestions or any opinions. So let's start. The first point is what's going wrong. You see that there is a usual project story chart that I have created over here. On the y-axis, you can see it is a relation between anxiety, shame, and fear. And on x-axis, you have time, which is first of all unproductive. And finally, at the end of the time, it becomes more productive. So usually, this is the line that is the ideal line of a burn down rate. And your anxiety, shame, and fear should get uh, decreased by the time you are ending the project. But it doesn't occur all the time. At the starting point, you knew, knew everything that you need to do. You assume that you knew what, what you need to do. But as soon as you start working, as the time increases, the anxiety, shame, and fear of completing the project increases a lot. And then finally, this is the point where you actually start working, which is a huge gap between the uh, time you knew and then the time you start. And that is where everything goes into crisis. Then. Everything is a nightmare journey through all this hell of this time in which anxiety and shame and fear is decreasing and increasing over the time. And this is what we'll categorize at hell zone. And this is the time where I'm trying to make things easier for you through this talk. And after that, everything is fine. You are back into your productive space, but you have already wasted a lot of time, wasted a lot of energy, and your team might not like it. So let's make sure that this doesn't happen in your next print or next project. And that's what this talk will help you through. One important thing that I have found during my career journey is to create half products. That's totally fine, but not create half as product. And there is a very good differentiating line between these two. Always ship the things that you are fully confident with. Don't ship things that okay how are half. So one of the main reasons why things fail is because of poor planning. You see, poor planning is like uh, creating a rail track while the train is running or like fixing things as they occur. So you are not actually developing something. You are just doing crisis management. And it's you are not the only one. Most of the problems occur uh, in, in crisis management only. And that's because mainly due to poor planning. Also, another problem that people usually face is thought clarity. Every people, every person in the team has a different perception about what the project needs to be delivered. And some people like just not understand what the thing that they are trying to build is mainly because everybody has a different opinion, different level of thinking. So they assume things differently. How we can fix these things is also covered during this talk. 
Also, many people are not using the tools optimized, my friends. Professionals who have a quite good experience will respect this opinion that to, uh, tools should be very well used. But most of the people like this poor fellow guy don't know what these tools are or this guy who thinks that it's really overwhelming to use the tool. So just get through this and which actually waste a lot of time of your team. Everybody is not using the accurate tools that they should be using. One important problem is also premature optimization, which is classified into three ways. Thinking too far, you are thinking a lot ahead story, you are thinking of making a product as comparison to Facebook or Google, which is not possible at current time. Also, most of the people are thinking of scalability. They are thinking of making the application run for millions of people, which is totally not true. The application that has been designed for 1,000 people might not run for the next 10,000. So always just take care of the current uh, load size that your application is going to handle. Don't think of a lot of scalability that is going to come in the future. Also, sometimes the scope of the whole project is so much overwhelmed that just starting and finishing it is not making any sense. Also, another problem is if you don't optimize your project at all, like premature optimization is wrong, but not optimization at all is also wrong. People think that if things are working in the project, then you should not touch it. And uh, things don't run constantly. It sometimes they run on some piece of input and some other piece of input, it won't work. Then people don't rigorously test things. They leave it to the users. If there are testing uh, happening, it should be by the user's complaint, which is really wrong way to do things. And of course, unfavored production. It's not important that your machine or the development environment that you might be using is exactly the same as the server or the production environment uh, that will be over there. So all these problems leads no optimization at all and creating a lot of chaos. Let's come to the final solution then, how you should actually plan the project. So you see, there are different definitions of what people think about uh, you know, project from moms to dads to what clients think the project manager actually does, what you think what project management is. And this actually is what you are doing is like micromanaging everything like kittens playing on the road. So one important thing that I found very important is talking in terms of time. If you practice this thing in every project, trust me, there won't be any thought clarity problem or problem in delays. Talking in diagram means that you create a diagram of the fully functional thing that you are trying to build. The benefits of this process are it brings a lot of clarity in the whole project. It confirms that everybody is in the same page. Everybody knows what they are trying to build and they are not missing at the point. Also, it also avoids any possible rundowns because all these modules are labeled very well on the diagram and you don't have any surprise modules or surprise function or surprise infrastructure that you have to add in the middle of the project. Also, it helps you plan properly what resources you will need, what kind of skill set you will need, and they don't create a mid, uh, mid project crisis or anything like that. But another question that arises is how much planning or how much diagrams that you should actually make. It should be just enough to get everyone around. You're not trying to plan a whole Indian uh, project or something. You're just trying to get all these five people to know about what projects you're working on. It should be made with collaboration. If you are the project manager or the lead of the project, it is not, not just the responsibility of the project manager, but the whole team. If everybody discussed, comes on the same table and discusses what and how the project should be made, trust me, there won't be any problem occurring in the future. Also, it should be regularly talked. If you have a practice, common practice of holding regular meetings, then try to get through this project plan that you have just created in every meeting. Details are not necessarily, it's not important to uh, nail down every detail, every touch point, every single seconds, but just a simple overview that uh, what people actually should know about the project. And finally, try to run through all these uh, steps that you have written down in the flow chart, like a stimulation. What will happen if this is coming? What will happen if this is coming? 90% of the time you will face all these uh, issues that might occur in the production solved in the diagram phase only. And if you are a team of highly skilled marine, you don't need to, we are, you are already expert, but uh, most of us are not. So let's try to follow these steps. And how you should actually do that. First thing that I have always found helpful is explore by a sample project. We are not expert in building everything from scratch. So it always helps in trying to find an example project with, that is very, very close to what we are trying to build. It helps you understand what kind of problem they might have faced, what kind of teams they might have used, how much time it took them. And there are, they write mostly blogs and uh, different FOSS software, even have their open source code 
the diagrams that it, the code is using. So it's very helpful to go through these projects. Always start by adding main elements of the project first and then go through the details. You should carry on like basic structures like what databases you might be using, where are the API interactions going to happen, where is the security infrastructure that you're going to uh, put in place, where is the identity management, like the basic stuff that the important elements that your project is trying to cover. This is the first thing that you should put on the project. Then start with specifying input and outputs. Try to connect them with arrows, like what is going out and what is going in into different modules. This helps you plan if you are trying to create a, a loosely coupled or microservice based application. It helps pro, uh, kind of reduce any possible uh, deadlocks or any situation that is going to happen in the future. Lay down all the tools that you might be using for the whole project. This helps the team learn in advance what are the skills that they need to have in order to work on that project. So that uh, in order to work on the project, people are not learning the skills going through a lot of documentations in middle of the project. They are going to do it just before starting of the project. And also add any connections. If your application might be using any third party API, go through that documentation very, very well and add these connections into the diagram again. Next, of course, if you are working in a team, which is the most uh, cases, if you are not a lone ranger. So this is some do's and don'ts that you should follow. First of all, tech, talk regularly. Don't create uh, information or communication silos between people. You should talk clearly. All these points that you are trying to discuss should be discussed very clearly. And there is no stupidness or shame that a person should feel in order to ask any questions. If you are the leader of the team, you should lead by example and you should be the first one who should start asking stupid questions and then the team will follow yours lead. also connect efficiently it's not important to uh, connect just for a chit chat your agenda and everything should be laid down in the uh, beginning of any meeting and that how it's how it should be it should be carried out then every responsibility that has been planned during the project and that's in the diagram should be shared responsibility so that uh, everybody is assigned with a key thing and whenever something goes wrong, there is an answerable person. It's not important that it matches his skills 100%. But if there is a manager for a small thing, it really eases up the process and doesn't delay the project a lot. Also, there are some don'ts that you should follow while teaming up. You should not hold long meetings. Long meetings create a lot of chaos, create a lot of tiredness, and people will stop attending your meetings in the future. Don't add unnecessarily people into the team. Just because it's they are around, it's not important to add them into the meeting. As Elon Musk says, if you are not participating in a meeting, you should just leave it. And it's no problem in doing that. Also, you should not duplicate roles. One person should be assigned for one particular thing, and that's it. And try to keep a regular energy and complete consistent energy throughout the project. It's usually the case that people are very excited in the starting of the project, and then after an hour, they are just OK. Uh, yeah, so try to keep up the energy pace constant throughout the whole project. Next important thing that you might be wondering is how you can predict the resources. Resources in prediction is very important in order to uh, avoid any possible delays that might occur in the future. What things you should keep in mind is basically the time. Now, the time shouldn't be exactly calculated, but it should be roughly estimated that by when you are expected to deliver this project. And by the time you start working on the project and your anxiety level goes down, you'll be more sure about when the project is going to get finished off. Also calculate the effort. The difference between time and effort is effort is the output, uh, the time it will take each individual developer to complete a single module. And the time divided by effort is the actual resources, the amount of developer time you will need. Also try to create a rough estimation of what servers, machine, or hardware you might be using. And they should be already kind of set up before even the deploy so that there can be uh, the, uh, possible rundowns during the server failure or any configuration failure can be avoided on the final day. Also calculate and try to keep all the skills that the team needs on hand before starting the project so that they can start learning on things without any problem in the future. Another thing that you might be thinking is setting up sprint uh, deliverable and milestone. So for those of you who haven't known the concept of sprint, sprint is nothing but a regular, like a consistent work uh, kind of schedule in which you try to complete a particular task. And you can use tools such as GitHub issues to complete particular uh, issues and then assign to it to a label and then completing these labels by one go. And then you can use Kanban tools like Trello, which has been very helpful. All these tools are free. 
and git crack and timelines to measure the milestone that your whole project will be delivering these tools uh, are the things that you can use but what not to do while setting up the milestone is the important factor over here don't add too much details to the sprint so and too much kind of uh, individual details like how this thing should be made should be left to the users how they feel comfortable on how to create these things also don't create a long sprints long sprints causes a huge chance of the project getting delayed don't add large number of deliverables to the project if there are large number of deliverables try to split them into the previous sprint or the next sprint also don't create half features half features are not good for any of the sprint even the previous sprint or the next sprint so either add completely in the previous one or either add completely in the next one and don't add on the fly changes because they are the major reason which are trying to bring end to the project that you are trying to make people are not happy with it your developers don't understand them quickly and they won't be tested thoroughly also don't try to be the uncle sam who promises false deliverable time and then you can't actually deliver so be reasonable with the times and project timelines that you will be creating now you have set up your time you have set up the every plan that you have to create now you are actually getting to start the work and this is the time where you should take care of the environment that your team is going to work in the first thing that is very important is the team communications you should have a definite meeting calendar and you should plan it ahead all the month calendar whenever you are going to meet and talk about certain module it should be pre assigned so that there are no surprise meetings coming in along and nobody can make an excuse about that also after end of every meeting try to keep notes what have been talked about what have been assigned to someone so that they can come back and they can discuss the previous notes first before going into the next one also create a definite communication channel that holds all the historical data all the historical interactions that you have so that if somebody was not totally attentive he can go back and easily go through these points it's not important to only use slack you can use any communication tool but it's very important to keep a transparency and everybody uses a shared channel of communication and if you don't then you will be missed like mr kim who ordered something else and, and it causes a world crisis uh, just because of misunderstanding of the communication now uh, amateurs won't uh, will have the problem in this thing and professionals won't so just for the neutrality of the whole talk we are going to talk about the git ritual that i have made myself so before starting any code like uh, whenever you start your machine and start coding for the work day first of all you should do a git pull definitely so that you know what other have worked on before you were not uh, working on that thing and also after you do a significant change let it be a new file addition new module addition try to commit it with a well labeled commit and also after every time you exit for the day or for an hour for the lunch try to push it to the git trust me if you follow these ritual this will help you avoid this possible miss uh, crisis crisis which uses uh, git push force for everything and that causes a lot of chaos in the whole project so this is the git ritual that you can use and also as uh, uh, the environment that we are talking about the actual environment in which you are going to work on is as important as the uh, as all these points that we discussed so this is a photo of my workspace that i used you don't need to spend a lot of money on doing that just take care of basics like having a nice ambient place to work with a good lighting condition good air coming in not lot of noises not lot of kids or dogs playing around just a nice place so that you are focused on your work dual display is a very good way to get productivity out of your setup it helps you debug things and uh, code things at different screens which is very helpful instead of switching tabs also take care about the ergonomics uh, that you have been sitting on it's not important to spend lot of money on just a gaming chair but a good one that has a good lumbar support and you have a good posture going on so that you don't get stressed if you are not if you are stressed then you won't be able to work good and also uh, if you have mess around that would lead to mess in your code also so just try to keep everything clean and light in your workspace and it will help you in getting through the sprint on the time so here are some apps you might already know about some of these apps which uh, i have discussed in the previous one this is a quick recap of all the apps and tools that you can use which include trello for project planning slack for communication diagrams.net for creating diagrams all these are free tools then you can use other tools uh, ubuntu is a is mostly used for python project just because of the compatibility that python has with ubuntu if you are a windows machine users you uh, you have something called as uh, linux subsystems that you can install on your machine and run ubuntu inside windows without the virtual environment directly like a cli command and then flask for the apis most of the things things you will already know i use termex for cli client which has been very good but you can use any cli or ssh client 
but you should have one so that you can easily connect with the server. And then uh, Jupyter Notebooks to test out the code and GitHub Actions for CI CD. And then a perfect IDE, either PyCharm or VS Code, depending upon your need. Personally, I use PyCharm because it is a bundle of a lot of tools that you have seen inside one, and their community edition is also very good. Now you have created your project, and now you're trying to come to the point where you are trying to optimize the project. So this is where you should start planning the project from the day one. Your project organization should be in a hey, folder manner. What for hey, Evan, sorry to interrupt, just time check. We just have another five minutes. Okay. So the folder manner is a way that everything that you are trying to create a new module is inside different mod uh, folders. You should not add a lot of script into your main uh, script. If your main script is loaded with a lot of things, then this will lead the same example with the other project modules that you're having. Everything should be enclosed within a function and main should not be bloated up with all the functionalities. All files and functions should be named properly depending upon the aspect of uh, things that you are working on instead of just the get and pu puppy names that you thought were funny to name, but actually the workable things that you can name them. And finally, the comments, formats, logs, everything should be properly documented. If everything happens fine, then the Python won't bite you and there won't be any these kinds of hurting things occurring in your way. This is a small note that people don't usually follow. Usually in Python, people install pip uh, dependencies on the fly. And uh, pip freeze is not a good way to use, uh, to in like create the dependency, which I have found uh, not, not that good. So piprex is a good uh, requirements management, dependency management tool that you can use in order to create a well-documented requirement.txt based on the modules that your current project is using. And also try to always work in a virtual environment so that if everything goes south, you are not able to understand environment, you can just detach and create a new virtual environment from scratch so that it doesn't have any impact on the production. Environment. And modern problems require modern solutions. So always try to find new ways to, uh, you know, kind of get around with the requirements in production. We have covered most of the things and uh, your project is working fine and everything. I hope so everything worked fine. You are now on the final delivery date. And this is the time where you will be thinking about how you should deliver the project. So there are three ways to do that. The easiest one is FTP file transmission protocol or SSH, which is the easiest way to get connected with the server, but it's a lot manual and you will have to change everything manually. But if your project is just in the starting stage, this is the best one to go because this has the least number of complications. If your project involves a lot of releases, a lot of people are working on the project, then you should set up a CI CD sprint. Now you should check out a tutorial. I won't get into much of detail about CI CD, but CI CD is a way to automatically push your code from the code repository to the server with testing and everything in place. And if scalability is a prime concern in your project and you have been into the all these edge, then finally the container comes along so that it can handle everything very easily and do the scaling on the fly. Very easily. Now, this is the D-Day plan, which is actually run down and backward so that you don't have any code imperfections or crashes happening while you are trying to show the demo to the code boss. The first thing starts with the day minus 10, where you should start creating a checklist of whatever things are left. Now, from day 10 to day 3, day minus 3, you should run this checklist every three days so that uh, most of the things create a kind of a pressurized environment on the people and they started splitting the task and started uh, creating things uh, which are not created yet. Then on day minus three, create another checklist with all these things that have not, have been left. And finally work uh, one thing at a time on day minus one to check final things and on day zero, plan your handover. So everything starts with the day minus 10 to day one. And if you are a person who loves to uh, stay dangerously, then you can skip the testing, but of course you should not do it. Uh, test everything that you have created very well so that every nothing happens on the fly on the production environment. So a quick recap. So whatever we got through, the first principle is called less. Whatever you do, keep it less, measurable, not add a lot of things. You are not Microsoft or Google who can handle a lot of uh, releases at once. So just keep limited things which you can easily measure. Second principle is case, which is keep it simple, stupid. In terms of your uh, documentation, in terms of your diagrams, in terms of your planning, keep it really simple. And the final one is don't miss. It's okay to miss the feature, but it's not okay to miss the deadline because it creates a dominoes effect for the future sprints that are going to happen. So if you follow all these things, you should be good. And that's what I could actually create uh, in this deadline. And ironically, 
we finished it on the time. You're on time, I mean, exactly yeah. on time. Okay, so briefly, just just jumping on to one or two questions, we have actually quite a few. So one of them was, I think this was about the pip rigs. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. So I actually, I tried to cover this one. So pip freeze means that if you are in a virtual environment, no problem. But if you are in a global environment, then pip freeze will take all the dependencies that pip has installed in your system and will import it in the requirement.txt, no matter if your project is using it or not. But I found piprex is very good because it goes line by line in the Python code and try to find all the dependencies that are in inside uh, your whole project and then create a pip requirements. Also, it takes care about the version which pip freeze cannot. It takes the versions of your system. And also, if you have any problem, you can just delete a requirement.txt, create a new virtual environment, start installing them again. So it's a good way to test if something won't freeze or uh, mismanage on the production environment. Cool. Thanks, Aman. That was, that was wonderful. I'm not going into the other questions. There are quite a few, actually. Uh, maybe you could you know, uh, get on in the Zulip, and you'll probably you know, sure. have a wonderful chat with all the folks there. I'll be so, happy to do that. Thanks a lot, Aman. So to all of you, uh, we have a couple of uh, great lightning talks lined up. Uh, you could just go back and have a look at all the lightning talks. So meanwhile, let me just uh, put up a couple of uh, banners, which might be really interesting. Thank you. So guys, feel free to join the Bangalore stream. Uh, we, have, we have a couple of great talks lined up. And also check out the other streams for uh, the lightning talks which are happening. Thank you. <laughs>